beautifully for the general membership, mostly adults. But, it, but our children in high school and college will benefit from them too, and we love that they read. And I met him, I think, years ago. His name is uh, Davis. The last name is Davis. Uh, his first name is Ira, A-I-R-A. -A. Ira, and he has a nickname, Enigma. And I don't see how it fit in, because <laughs> Enigma means something that's hard to understand, you know? And uh, his article is more understandable than mine. <laughs> Clear and flowing so beautifully. Um, so anyway, we have, and he's just one of many that we have, uh, youngsters, males and females. Don't forget, we got some females too, very, very serious about Islamic studies. And they're doing a beautiful job of uh, learning and understanding how to uh, communicate this religion to Muslims and to others and to non-Muslims. And by the way, we have to know how to communicate our religion to non-Muslims. Uh, when the Prophet started, what Muslim he had to speak to? There was no Muslim to speak to. So the first, the first preachings of Islam was done in the ears of non-Muslims, pagans, idol worshippers, etc. And that's where our message should be going now. It should be going to those who have false idols as gods. Hmm? Yes, sir. yes, false idols as gods. Don't think they don't have gods. All of them have gods. Just because they don't say Allah's God or the Creator's God doesn't mean they don't have, they don't have gods. The one that you give your life to or the thing that you give your life to is a God for you. It's a God for you. God means what's rules in your life. What you put over your life. What you give your life to in submission, in obedience. So if I'm following a certain Hollywood star and I'm following them so closely, my whole spirit and everything is tied up in that. And, and a lot of us are tied up just like that. If I have a particular Mm, rap singer or radio, radio uh, figure or something like that, you know, or TV star, whatever I have, Hollywood star, if I give my life to it, if that's more important to me in my life than anything else, that's the strongest influence in my life, that is my deity, that is my false god. Yes, so you should understand that. <clears throat> um, and those people that Muhammad the prophet, peace be on him, uh, had to speak to of his own country, of his own country, his countrymen, his countrymen that he had to preach to, they, they actually knew a stone could not do anything. Those stones represented some influence in their life. So they were worshiping influences in their life. And people today and, all, and in all times will be worshiping influences in their life. If they don't have the real God, the God of everybody and over everybody and over everything, if they don't have that God in their hearts as, as their main interest to protect them from other things, then they don't have the real God, but they do have idol gods. They have idol gods. Whether they know it or not, they have idol gods. So we don't want to be idol worshipers, but we want to call the people from idol worship. We should know how to communicate Islam, our religion, so that we wake up the minds of idol worshippers of this time that we are living in. Don't go after Christians who already know God and live in a better life than some of you. Oh, I'm going, I'm going to convert them. Convert them for what? When all these others around here laying dead, lying around dead, and all corroded, and smelling. Why don't you converse some of them? And those that's going crazy behind some rap star or behind some, some person styling, show business person, preaching God and ain't nothing but a show business figure. Why don't you converse some of them? They need converting. They need converting for if no other reason than to free their slaves. You hear what I said? 
if, if, if for no other reason than to free their slaves, you should be attract, trying to preach to their membership. I do that. I don't forget these people. I preach to them. I don't call them by names, but they know I'm reaching them. And they're progressing too, many of them. They're making progress. Yes, they're growing to be more beautiful and more beautiful. They don't remember my name. I don't care. I, I don't preach to them for them to call my name. I preach to them for their life to change. A little poetic, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I never forget those that were put in the same mind that I was put in, or the community that I came from was put in, the same community they came, Nation of Islam people. If you think I'm going to leave the Nation of Islam people alone, then you don't know a human being. A human being will help his brother who came through the same thing he came through. Uh, yeah. And I, pre I, I preach to them, and they hear me. I don't have to call their names. They, they know I'm reaching them, and I'm pleased to know that they are improving. They are growing more beautiful and more beautiful. Thank Allah. Yes. Yes. And as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, especially raised by my father and mother and raised to be at my father's side, how can I forget people that he converted? Yeah, that's right. If I know they are not thinking correctly yet, I know they still have problems with their religion. Right. How can I forget them? Right. I can. And I love them because some of them are better than many of us in their moral behavior and in their spirit and their devotion to doing good work. That's right. Yes. So I want you all to know that. I'm, um, the point here is I'm addressing the, the preacher who preached, who's supposed to preach Islam. We accept anyone who wants to help with this responsibility of bringing Islam to people, especially to people in our immediate environment, our families, our friends who need religion, etc. I support you. I support you even in calling yourself Imam. But I have to tell you that if you don't know how to lead congregational prayer, at any time, for any occasion, and if you don't know how to deliver the Juma Khutbah and lead the people in Juma prayer without embarrassing yourself, you are not a, an imam of the religion. You are not an imam of the religion. To be an imam of Islam, you must know that. You must be able to perform that and perform it without making a lot of embarrassing errors. Yes. Yeah. And we have several imams in the area uh, who can help you. If you want to become an imam like that, Imam Daniel Kareem can help you. Oh, yeah. he, can, he can help you learn what you have to learn to qualify. Yes, sir. And there are others who can help you here, not just Imam Daniel Kareem. There are others who can help you. But that's his work. He devotes himself to that. Right. Mm -hmm. So get some help to learn how to deliver the Juma Khutbah yeah. and lead the Juma prayers and the Eid prayers if you are going to accept to be called an Imam. Because yes. I'm informing the community right now that if you can't qualify by, doing, by being able to do that, then you are not an Imam for Islam. You're an imam, but not an imam for Islam. 
No, imam means a leader. Simply, it means a leader. But an imam for the Muslims is more than just a leader. He's a leader qualified by his knowledge and respect and obedience to the Quran hmm? yes, and to the life of Muhammad the Prophet. Yes, the, exemplary, the exemplary life of Muhammad the Prophet. That's what he has to be qualified in. And if he's not, he's not qualifying as a religious imam. As a religious imam. Detailed imam. Especially events imam. But not Muslim imam. <laughs> I hope you understand that. And really I'm going very softly with you. Because I love you and I know most of you are very sincere. Very sincere. But we can't um, disrespect our religion. So... Uh, if you know you don't qualify, you should tell people, I don't qualify as an imam. I'm a leader in this area, but I'm not a Muslim imam. You should just tell them that. <clears throat> uh, now, I know that many have been called imams, so we can give them assistance. And, they, and save them for trouble that they'll have with the department of, of the tax department, IRS, you know. Well, you qualify as a Christian minister for some denominations. Well, all you have to do is just say, I believe, and, and preach out the side of your mouth or the front or any kind of, you know. Some of them get by with that. So that's okay. I don't have any problem with that. But don't take it outside of the Department of Revenue. Let that claim stay right there with the Department of Revenue and go no further. Yes, one other thing. I'm known, I don't, I don't have to be quiet about it. I'm proud of it. I'm known to, to be a law citizen, laurel citizen of these United States of America. I don't know any way to support anything but wholeheartedly and with truth and be truthful. That's the only way I can support anything. So if I hadn't found a way to understand the beauty of our idea of government as citizens of these United States, to appreciate it and support it wholeheartedly, I would never have told you I support it. Yeah. I can only support something when my whole spirit and whole heart is can be given to it and I don't have problems. I don't have any problems. If you um, uh, don't know it, most of the good citizens, the loyal, sound, Citizens of these United States, they're not pleased with everything. They work to keep their government good and they work to make it better. Our form of government is, is a growing, a living organism that we believe can grow even bigger, more important, more valuable and more beautiful. So our government had the, the founding fathers designed the, 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 uh, the, the, form, the form for our government so that we can always make improvements upon our government. Yes. So don't think we accept everything because we say we are loyal citizens of the United States. No, we accept the, the, the essential yes. nature and design for our government. We accept the beautiful and wonderful contributions of Americans yes. to our government, the founding, beginning with the founding fathers, yes. but the many others and all of them. We appreciate their contributions and we are loyal members with them, living those dead and living mm -hmm. and those that will be born. We are loyal members with them for the beauty, beauty and health and, and, and life of this government now 
and for as long as God permits the earth to support it. Hmm? Yes. So I go from there to tell you this. We have the separation of church and state. Okay? Separation of church and state. But is that respected by government people, government offices? Is it respected by the private citizens? No. My daughter, Bekira, who now lives in Atlanta with her family, she moved there so she could put her children in the Muslim school there. We have a very beautiful, excellent school there. Andre Imam Pleeman and the principal of the school now, uh, Sister Shahid. She's been there for a long time. I shouldn't say now. She's been there for a long time. She's the backbone of the school. Very strong, dedicated sister. So anyway, my daughter, Bakira, she was only about maybe 15 or 16. And she said, Daddy, I joined the Chicago Police Department. And she, I guess she thought I was going to be upset or something. I said, you did? She said, yes. I said, how? She said, they have junior police. I said, oh, you're going to be a junior police? I said, very good. They're going to teach you discipline and whatever. Good. Now, I told you that to tell you, my daughter is almost 40 now. I tell you that to tell you that a long time ago, I favored our children, if they wanted to, joining the military, joining the police department. But I don't favor any member that claims me as this leader, their leader secretly joining the government or the police department. If you can't come out in the open and say, I'm an FBI. If you can't come out in the open and say, I'm a member of the Chicago Police Department. There's something wrong with that. Many of us have the wrong idea about our prophet Muhammad's marriage to Aisha. Peace be on him. May God be pleased with Aisha, the wife and scholar. In the time of Muhammad the prophet, peace be on him. It is said that he married her when she was 13. And I can't understand how a leader in our community can say, yes, our prophet married Aisha. She, Aisha, she was 13. You're not telling the whole truth. And that's dangerous to speak that kind of language in the public. That a man of his age married a girl only 13. Some reports say, in fact, most reports say, if they say at all, they say that the marriage wasn't consummated until she was 19. And if you knew the culture of those people, a friend can offer, or a person who, who, who loves another person, can offer their daughter to that person at an age before puberty, before body hairs appear in the shadow. And he's offering the, the, the daughter because he wants that person to take that daughter as a wife. And in those cultures, the person can accept that person as a wife. But it doesn't mean that he's going to take her to bed. Right, come on. No. He accepts that and he's going to wait for her to mature. That's it. And in the meantime, the parents of that child is going to be working with that child to help that child mature for the position that child is going to be responsible for as the wife of that honorable man uh, who's responsible for many, many things. Huh? Yes, That's how it goes and most of us don't know that. We know about the bar, bar mix of the Jews, you know, how at a certain age, 12 years old, the young boy, he comes in and he joined the men. He joined the men to sit in on discussions, to learn the religion from knowledgeable elders. 
Huh? Joining the men doesn't mean he's joining a team, a secret team that's going to be carrying out something. It's possible <laughs> for, some of the, for some of the people on, on this earth in religion. It's possible that he might be joining a team, but that's not, that's not what is expected. It's expected that he will be taught the religion and educated and brought up in the religion, in their rights, in the, knowing their rights and their culture, all that, their tradition. Let me get to the point. We have an uh, organized, they think they're secret, an organized movement that's been going on for many years by leaders who tell their members what to listen to from Imam W. Dean Muhammad and what not to listen to. And they, and they get your young children and they reach them and organize them, bring them into organization. And they are training them to be a help for the government system. And the government is not enforcing this on them. The government have not asked them to do this. They volunteer it. And I could call some names. But I will not. I'm just warning you that if you have a daughter 13 or a son 13 and somebody asks you, tell you that we, we think they, this, they'll make good to the members of here, um, they, they can come into this organization, a youth organization. And the leader is over 40. And they call in youth 13 to 40. You'll find this in the, in the Muslim Journal, the latest issue, I think. They're calling the, 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 age, the age range 13 to 40. Who is doing that? Where that pattern? Why would we see a pattern like that? Gang members. Gang members. Secretly, secretly working with the police department. Yes, they volunteered. Police department not going to turn it down. They say, "Well, these are, we have this gang, and and uh, we'll keep you informed. We keeping them in check, holding their their uh, wild energies, so that they don't hurt anybody but themselves." Think about it. You're awful quiet night now. Yes, sir. You're scared? You're fearful? I'm not. Now I can tell you what the Quran say, but I think most of you all know what the Bible say more than what you know what the Quran say. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad led you in the Bible, not the Quran. And the Bible says the fearful and unbelieving will have their part in the lake of fire. You will be destroyed with the wicked. Hmm? <laughs> So if you're fearful, you have cut yourself out already. I have to say what's right. And I have to protect the innocent. And many of our innocent young children will be joining this so-called youth organization that's saying the age range is from 13 to 40. I won't let you have my, my daughter or my child 13. No, indeed. It's 13 to 40, and you're doing something honest and decent and clean. Why don't you do it in the open? Why don't you tell us, before you dismiss, I want to announce the youth organization. We have a program for the children. They never do that. They meet privately. And I know their boss. And he should be ashamed of himself. And he will hear this. He'll get it later. He should be ashamed of himself. You're setting the young children up to be molested. Yes, that's right. yes you are. That's right. And you're setting them up to be treated as potential criminals. Right. That you have to organize and, uh, so that they don't bother the hair of the establishment. Get, get in the hair of the establishment. 
That's a cheap, no good job you got. And I don't recognize you, I don't recognize your organization. And I don't want any member claiming to be a follower of Imam W.D. Muhammad or under the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad, because after all, I follow the Prophet, we all follow Prophet Muhammad, and we all have the Quran as authority in our life. The Word of God is over us all. Yes? But I don't approve of any member of this community, male, female, young or old, giving your children to some organization that says its members are from, from uh, 13 to 40. What happened to you all? You, you want your daughter 13 under somebody, on Sunday man, under some person 40? And mixing up with with the uh, males and females, or females separately, or females separately, I don't care how it's done, but they're mixing up with those that are 40 years old and calling themselves a group, a team, an organization, separate from the general membership? How is that decent? It's not decent. It's not decent. Now, I've come out against them very strongly almost 20 years ago. Who, do I have any witnesses here? Yeah, 20 years or more ago. I came out against them very strongly. <clears throat> they were trying to get youth, young children, organized under Imam Hafiz. They wanted me to authorize him being over this organization or being head of an organization. So I said, well, he can be head of an organization, but he has to be at least 40 years old. Yeah, that's right. And then, they, uh, since he didn't qualify to be, now not over a youth organization, that's to, that's to be qualified over our organization. That's right. He had to be at least 40 years old. So I saw that they wanted him a member and wanted to give him qualifications. So I really put the age at 40 to keep him out because I didn't trust him. And right now he's not with us. He tried to overthrow me with the Saudi uh, diplomat. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And failed. Yes, that's right. That's right. Driving me home, he stopped in front of my house. He said, Be careful, because I wasn't supporting him in what he wanted to do, and that is push me out before the Saudis and make the Saudi think he's the boss. He wanted the Saudi the diplomat to think he was the boss. So since I didn't support him in that, he takes me home and he says, "Poor, I got out of the car. And just as he pulled up to my door, he said, be careful. I've heard it before. I've heard it in his tone. I know what he meant. I knew what he meant. So I said nothing. I didn't reply. I could have told him what I was going to do. No, you ain't supposed to tell him what you want to do. So anyway, he said, and tell Rafa to be careful too. Because Rafa has been like a right arm to me all, for all these years. Except for twice when I had to put him out. See, see you, don't, you don't have a court to put anybody out anymore. You just tell them you're through, man, for five weeks, five months, or five years. <laughs> He's here right now. He's probably laughing, too. <laughs> yeah, I had to put him out twice. And John Ramadan, too, I had to put him out once. Yeah, ain't nobody perfect. Sometimes, he, as he said, you need to tighten the screws. I'm using his language now. Sometimes you have to tighten those screws. 